Hey, good morning, family. I'm excited to be with y'all today. I, uh, I have a word for you. I'm trying not to cry through the whole thing. <clears throat> and the Lord, the Lord visited me last, last night. Sorry, I'm going to get it together because I've got a message for you. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. Okay. All right. Get it together here. Uh, I had a visitation. An open-eyed vision that lasted for about an hour. The Lord showed me a lot. What's to come. God help, God help everyone. Um, he told me to do two videos. He said, I want you to separate it and don't do it all at once. So I'll give you part and one and part two. But I'm going to give you the last of it first because it was holy. The, the way, he, the, for whatever he appeared Jesus appeared. The first of it was about the economy. And uh, what's coming. More about what's coming financially for, for, for you people. Uh, and and then the last of it was, was his heart. is it, uh, A cry for the lost. So I'm going to start with it there. In this vision, I saw the sun going down. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, Brandon, the sun is setting on, on, on this dispensation of time. He said, Every, everything that humanity has been, this part of it is coming to an end. The dispensation of grace is coming to an end and we're going, you're going to go, they're going into the tribulation. The tribulation is about to begin. And I saw the sun going down and it was just right where it was getting ready to set. And I could see the sun coming through the clouds and it was beautiful. But there was no time. Everything was, 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 was timeless. Okay. Okay the way it felt like there was no, like, you know, when you feel your life is moving, but it was just a pe It was just like, what I'm trying to say is every day we feel our emotions, we do everything, but it was just a total peace. I could see the beautiful colors coming through. Everything was so, I could see the beautiful colors coming through and everything was so beautiful. And then all of a sudden Jesus stood there. And he had this beautiful robe on. I've never seen him wear it before in any visitation that I've had. It was beautiful. It had a, a white thread it was perfect right here and it went into another kind of like he had a garment underneath it but he had a robe on top of it and it was a hood and it was it had white around the top and it was it was uh it was all kinds of different like embroideries like colors from like i've never seen before like tapestry you know it looked like tapestry and um he had a huge wooden staff in his right hand and it went from from the ground all the way up into the sky like like right you know above his head not the sky but above his head and it was it was thick real thick looking staff and he and and his face had so much compassion And all of a sudden I heard him say, 
He said, one last call. One last call. I'm calling my sheep. I'm coming. I'm coming. One last call. He said out of his mouth and it sounded like a horn blowing throughout this valley. And I looked upon this valley and there was a valley of sheep all on this green pasture. But half of it was green, but half of it was dark. And all of these sheep that were, were, were the closest to him, because he was upon a hill and the sun was setting on time. The, the sun was setting and it was, it was coming to an end. Everything that we've known, everything we've ever we've ever had as humanity from the beginning when Adam and Eve all the way to where we are right now. He said, the sun is setting on time. And he said to me, he said, Brandon, he said, one last call. He yelled it. And all of a sudden down that valley, the sun started to shine upon the sheep. There was heavy sheep with big, big fur. There was skinny sheep that would look like they had been sheared. And they were completely no fur. They were just bald looking sheep. And they were grazing upon this grass. And all of a sudden they looked to him, the sheep did, and they started to bah, bah, bah. And they started to run to the father. And he was waiting on them. The heavy sheep was running, but I, it was interesting because I could see their legs and they were almost like a, at a trot, like as fast as you could a gallop, like you're galloping, trying to get to the father. Some of the sheep were waddling. They were waddling because they were heavier than others. Some sheep were, were, were like barely moving. They were barely trying to get there. They looked like they were having a hard time, but they were, they were on their way. And I could see the ones behind. His face was like he was not, he was like longing. I don't want to use words that, 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 that but it was like he was distressed. Like the Lord could see them, but they weren't watching. They had gray fur and they had black on them. The sheep that were behind here, they were in the darkness. And they were, there was grass and they were eating, but they never heard him call. One last call. They weren't paying attention. They just kept eating. Time was running out and they didn't even know it. Those sheep were, were, were covered in like a soot. They were covered in black. And they were all grazing upon the land, but, 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 and I just kept watching. I just kept watching his face and he kept looking. And he was looking to see if they were going to hear him as he's calling. Because we're running out of time. We're running out of time. Humanity as we know it is coming to an end. Humanity as, 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 as it's been for the last 6,000 years before we go into the millennial reign. We're fixing to go into, we're going to go into the tribulation. And that's what he was trying to tell everybody. Was that there was one last call. One last harvest. One last push. And I told you all this before. That the bells will ring in the church one more time. To sound the alarm of his coming. Now he's giving me this. He come to me personally. And he told me to tell you. That there's one last call. If you, you're living on the edge. And you, you're not living for Jesus. That, that, that boat, is your boat ready? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Are your, is your heart ready for the coming of your king? If you're not and you're riding the fence, you better get your heart right before him because you're about to miss the boat. It's all, the, 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 the sun is setting. The sun is setting and people are asleep. Some of them were awake and they were looking for, their, for, the, for, the, for the Lord. Those sheep were, were attentive and they heard his voice because the Bible says, my sheep will know my voice and a stranger's voice they'll not follow. One last call. And, I, and I, saw, I saw that sun setting and it went down. 
And all of a sudden, if this is the end of the vision, whenever I was there with the Father, I've never seen this before. In the spirit realm, whenever I'm looking over, I could see the sun coming down over, over, just all over. And the light shined directly into my spiritual eyes. And I could not see anything else. And it was just fire all over me. And, it, and then the sun set and it went away. The vision instantaneously stopped. And the Lord started to, to tell me, he said, I want you to tell my people that is, there's one more call, Brandon. There's one more call and I'm, and I'm coming. I'm giving them one more chance. I'm trying to get I'm a great harvest of souls. I, he, he, was, he was warning the people that he's coming and, and, and praying over praying over Israel, praying over, over the things that he's showing me that's coming. And um, a great shaking. I know it's not a word in the English vocabulary to say shakening, a shakening, but a great shaking is coming more than what anybody realizes. People, people are not prepared for what's about to happen. And the Lord said, Brandon, it's time. You have to get your boat ready even more. Separate yourself unto me. He said, it's time for, for the people. He, he showed me people in YouTube. He showed me people that I have known. He said, Brandon, they'll be broke within a day. They're going to lose everything because their heart is not with me. They feel that they are, he said. But these people, and he showed them all to me. And he said to me, he said, Brandon, every single one of them will be humbled. Every single one of them will lose it that fast. Everything that they've ever had and everything. He said, because Brandon, my heart is not that any man should perish, but all come to repentance. But sometimes we go through hard times because we're too stiff-necked. We are not listening. We're not watching. We're not waiting. We're not having our lamps full. Keeping him forefront in, in, in first place. Making him Lord over your life. He's second, maybe third. You don't consult him at all. Sometimes you go to church. Sometimes you don't. You really don't care. It's kind of like, well, you know, God's just there. He's not Lord. He's not first. He's not priority in your life. And there's going to be a there's going to be a great sh sifting of the sand, and you're going to see the good stuff rise to the top, and the bad stuff go to the bottom. Because it, there's a there's a line being drawn in the sand. There's being a line drawn in the sand, and God is saying, "Who is for me, and who is truly for me, and who is truly it, it, it just riding the fence, and who who is truly against me." Are you on the Lord's side? If he calls one last call, do you hear his voice? Are you the one that he's calling that's not listening? Is your head down in that grass thinking that you're eating and you're safe? Do you truly believe that if Jesus came back today in the rapture of the church that you would go with him? Do you believe it? Or is it just something that just, when it's convenient? Is a God, is your relationship with God convenient? I have to ask you these things. There's one last call. He's trying to tell you that he loves you. Do you hear him today? Don't turn him away. It's time for you to fall more in love with Jesus. It's time for you to give your heart and be sold out. It's time for you to sell out to Jesus today. None of the world and all of him. All to thee, my precious Lord. All to thee. I surrender all. Just like that beautiful song. I surrender all. Have you surrendered all? Are you riding the fence? Do you have one foot in the world? Do you have one foot in with Jesus? Like I said, is he just a convenient relationship just because we want fireproof insurance? 
He's much more than that. If you could truly see the compassion on his face that I saw for humanity, the concern that this dispensation of time is coming to an end, but he wants not that one man should perish, but all come to repentance. Will you give him a chance today? Would you yield yourself over to him today? Would you tell him, I want you to be my Lord and personal Savior? He's waiting with his arms wide open, waiting for you to give your heart over to him fully. Stop running. There's so many of you running. There's so many of you all that think, well, I'll, I'll, I'll yield over whenever I get older. I'll, I'll, I'll give my heart to Jesus whenever it's convenient. Right now, I'm enjoying sin. I'm enjoying living like the world. <laughs> but the Lord told me to tell you, time is over. Whether that is a year from now, five years, or whatever, when you look at the scale of eternity, it's nothing. It's just a vapor. Life is a vapor. Hell is forever. Heaven is forever. Which one do you choose? Do you choose heaven or do you choose hell? If you die tonight in your sleep, where will you spend eternity? You say, well, I used to, I saved, I said the sinner's prayer. I've done all this. I've done everything. I, oh yeah, you know, I did it when I was a kid, but I live like the world. And I've said it before. The very thing you say you were saved from, you went back to. Well, I was saved. I got saved when I was five, ten years old. I went and got baptized in the church and did all this. But you haven't spoken to him since. Does he know you? Does he know you? You may say, to know somebody. What does that really mean? I, I'm familiar with them. I say that to a lot of people. People say, I know Brandon. Oh, yeah, I know him. I've seen him on YouTube. They don't know me. They, 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 have, they have an idea about me, but you don't know me. None of you all do. None of you all do. The only people who really know me are my kids and my wife. Maybe my mom and my dad, they raised me. But the people who were intimate with me, helping me out along the way. But none of you know me. I'll be real with you. You've heard a lot about me. And you may have heard a lot about Jesus, you may have heard a lot about Bible stories, but that doesn't mean you know him. There's an intimacy with the Father that is a day-to-day -day process, just like it is with your family that knows you intimately, a lot of you. And does he, whenever he said, you prophesied in my name, you laid hands on the sick and they recovered in my name. You cast out devils in my name. And he said, depart from me, I never knew you. Does he know you? Does he know you? Like I said before, that shows some a little umph and spiritual. If you can cast out a devil, that takes some faith. If you if you if you can lay hands on the sick and see him recover, that takes some that takes something too. You can you can prophesy too, and that takes something because you you had to have heard his voice. He didn't say a false prophet in my name. He said you prophesied my name. So that means you heard him. But do you know him? He said, Depart from me, I never knew you. I'm asking you today to check your heart. I'm asking you today to cry out to Jesus and make him your Lord and Savior, not a, just a, a, not a, a, a person that you have that is convenient. Christianity is not convenient a lot of times. There's a lot of persecution that has come my way recently. But I stand with him and he visits me. And he said, Brandon, the persecution will increase but the anointing will also increase. And as you do what I tell you to do, I will use you more and more. Do not fear man, fear me. It's not always easy to hear those things, but I do it for him because I want him to look at me and say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest. That's all I'm after every day. I say, Father, use me for your glory. For we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency, the power will be known of him and not of me.
And that's all I have for you on this video. But I want to give you all a chance to ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. You say this prayer after me. Father, I'm a sinner. I've been away from you. It just has to be, just make it personal. You don't have to make it all religious, these and thous. Just be real. Father, I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my life and I want to make you my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Forgive me of my sins. I want you to write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I yield myself over to you. Do with me. Have your way in my life. You're, you're, my, you're my captain of my ship. I need you. I'm, I'm, I'm lost without you. Thank you, Lord, that you, you, you've forgiven me. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus died for me and rose again on the third day. And I, you believe it. Believe it with your heart that he died and rose again on the third day. Say out your mouth that he's your Lord. And then make a way, go find a Bible-believing church that prays and reads their Bible and teaches you how to live by faith. And get plugged into that church. It's that easy. Forgive. Just, just, just walk. And, and, and then stop being a knucklehead. Stop practicing it yeah we stop we fall down and we skin our knees but we do not do it habitually on purpose i'm gonna go out and party and have fun tonight and then i'm gonna repent on sunday no if we mess up we mess up and then we don't run from god when we sin we run to god our sin is none of the devil's business but he will tempt you and then beat you over the head with it because he is the he's the accuser and the brother but we have got to get to a place where we say, Lord, have your way in me. I know I, 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 I am not going to be able to do this on my own. That's called grace. But there comes a point in time where people make a choice. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. You choose to live in sin, a lot of you. They say, well, I choose to go out and look at bad things on the internet. I choose to, to, to go to the bad clubs. I choose to, to, to uh, fornicate and have adultery and do all this stuff. You choose to do those things. You're tempted, but you choose it. You can say, no. Submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Get yourself in the Word. Read the Bible and pray. And I'm not, and I'm not here to con condemn anybody. We're all a work in progress. But I'm trying to tell y'all, there's, there's a process to it that you walk your salvation out with fear and trembling. And we seek him daily. We seek him daily. And he will clean you up and make you, make you all polished up. And it takes, it's a process, okay? That part of it. Some of you all have some bad addictions. Some of you all have some bad bondage. You don't give up. You just keep going to him. When you fall, you stand back up. When you fall, you stand back up. Does it make sense? I'm trying to make it easy for you. So for all the rest of you, I just say I bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching this video. If this blessed you and, and you want to, uh, tell somebody about it. Uh, like the video, share it, comment down below. Uh, it helps to get in the algorithm. I They have been after me, the YouTube. And uh, persecution comes for the word's sake. It's going to happen. But we just keep standing. And that's what we do. We, and, 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 so, and that's where I say, put a smile on your face and a song in your heart. Jesus loves you so much and we love you. And we will see you all in just a couple minutes. I'm going to make another video here. Bye-bye.